Okay, hey guys. Um, so um, I'm here to do um, a, a teen kid lesson with you guys, and um, I've got my computer with me with my lesson and my Bible with me. So if you um, have a Bible at home, you might want that. Um, okay, so we've been uh, looking at people in the Bible that we maybe have not heard a lot about before. So we've done Abel, um, and we did, last week we did Rebecca. Um, this week we're doing one of my very, very, very favorite people in the Bible. I love talking about her. I think she's awesome. Um, and her name is Rahab. So our story um, comes from the book of Joshua. Um, if, so if you want to find that. Um, let's start with um, some of those basic questions that we'd like to start our lesson with. So if we're looking in the book of Joshua, we're looking for a book of the Bible. The first question is, what is the Bible? Let's take a minute to think about it. If someone was going to ask you, hey, what is the Bible? What would you tell them? So the Bible is a book written by God for people to understand um, more about God and who he is and what he's done for us. Good. Um, our next question is, well, who is God? So we say God wrote the Bible. Who is God? Good. So God is the creator of all things. He's in charge of everybody. He knows everything. Um, he loves everybody. I'm sure these are some things that you said, and we could probably describe God forever and ever because he um, is eternal, right? Um, and so, uh, good. He wrote the Bible for us to understand more of those things about him. Um, my next question is, where in the Bible is our story today? So I already told you it's in the book of Joshua, but who can tell me? Um, which testament is Joshua in? The Old Testament or the New Testament? Good. The Old Testament. So Joshua comes at the beginning of my Bible. Um, and the Old Testament and the New Testament are different. Um, we separate them. What is the biggest difference in the Old Testament and the New Testament? Exactly. So Jesus is born on the earth in the New Testament. This is the one in the back half. In the front half, Jesus is not um, born, come to the earth as a man, um, but he still exists, right? He's existed forever. He exists today. He will exist forever. Um, so Jesus is not uh, a character in our story. He's not a person in the story, but the story still points us to him, right? The whole Bible is written so that we can understand who God is, who Jesus is, who the Holy Spirit is. We can understand that better. Um so that leads us to our last question. Our last question is, why should we read this Bible story? Why should we, as people, as um, people who believe in God, who he is, why should we read this Bible? What, what good does it do us? Why is it important? Good, good. So, exactly. Um... We read the Bible so we can understand God, so that we can understand um, who we are, right? Because God made us, and God has purpose for us, and the Bible helps us with that. Um, okay, so we know we can trust the Bible. We know it's important to read. So as we read, um, I want you to do two things. I want you to use your ears for listening. I want you to listen for our person of the day, Rahab. Um, she's a character in our story. She's in a lot, so listen for her. Um, and the next thing I want you to do, I want you to show me your feelings while we read. So we've talked about how um, the Bible gives us stories a lot of times that give us all sorts of feelings, right? We feel proud, we feel excited, we feel angry, we feel confused, and, and that's good, right? It's good um, for the Bible to make us feel things. So as you are feeling things in the story, I want you to show me with your thumbs. If you're feeling good, happy, excited, give me a thumbs up. If you're feeling angry, upset, I want you to put your, your thumbs down. Um, and it's, it's one of those confused feelings. You're not sure how you feel about it. Give me one of those middle thumbs, right? Okay, good. So um, just pretend I can see you, right? Show me your thumbs as you're reading. It's good for you to think about your feelings. Okay. Joshua 2. 
if you're reading along, um, the the story I'm going to read today, it follows along pretty well with um, what the real Bible says, but I'm going to read my version of the story because um, sometimes reading God's word um, uses some vocabulary words and some language that's a little difficult for us. Um, and so hopefully reading the kid version will help us understand um, when we go read the real version. So please, please, please don't take my word for it. Look for it yourself in the real Bible. Okay, Joshua 2. Um, so it starts with a man named Joshua, right? The book's named after him. Um, and what Joshua's doing is Joshua is leading the people of God, God's people, the Israelites. Joshua is leading the people of God to the land that God had promised them. Now, if we know anything about God's promises is that he always, what? Yeah, he always keeps his promises. So if God promised them this land, that God said, this land belongs to you, um, then we know that they're going to get the land, right? Because God keeps his promises. So let's see what happens. So Joshua's leading the people. He's the leader. And he's leading all these people um, to the land that God told them was theirs. So God's people were ready to go into the part of the land um, that's called Jericho. So you might have heard about Jericho before. This is a story we hear a lot of times, but um, keep listening. So Joshua decided to send two men to spy on Jericho before they went in. So he's, it's two guys to go in, check things out before they all go. When the two spies got into the city, they stayed with a woman named Rahab. Um, so there you go. Ear perks up. There's our, there's our leading lady, right? We're looking for Rahab. Um, let's learn a bit about her. So Joshua says Rahab's life was very hard and very sad. Um, so Rahab does not have a happy life. She does not have an easy life. Her life is tough, way tougher than yours. Um, her life was very hard, very sad, and her life was full of bad choices. So a lot of times our bad choices um, and our hard lives, they all kind of go together, right? Rahab's got a hard life. She's made some really bad choices. How are we feeling about Rahab? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Okay, maybe kind of confused. Maybe just thumbs down. Maybe you're going, she can't be good, right? She, bad choices, hard life. Um, but... Um, the spies decided that Rahab's house was the best place to hide. Which is interesting. The king of Jericho, right? This is the city that they've gone in and they're hiding, spying out. The king of Jericho heard about the spies in the city. Um, probably not going to like that, right? So he heard about the spies and he sent a message to Rahab. And the message said, show us the men who are here to spy on our land. We know they are at your house. Okay, now if the king sends you a message about uh, you hiding spies um, and he knows that they're at your house, how are you going to feel? Yeah, exactly. You're going to be scared. You're going to be nervous, right, that you're busted. So when Rahab got the message, she decided to help the men from the people of God. And she hid them. So she made a choice, right? Does she, um, she's afraid of the king. Does she turn him into the king or does she help the people of God? Um, so she decides to help the people and she hides them. She sent word back to the king that she had seen the men, but she didn't know they were spies. Yeah, right, Rahab. She didn't know they were spies. She said that the men went out of the city gate as the sun set. So Rahab is really working it, right? <laughs> this is not what happened. She's protecting them. Um, she told the king to follow the men because he could catch them. And so the king's men took off out of the city gate to catch the spies. Whew, so they're safe, right? Good. Okay. Now, Rahab had actually taken the spies up to her roof where she stores her materials for making clothes. So she would keep these big flax plants and she'd make clothes out of them. So she had these big piles of flax plants. She took them up there to hide them. Okay. Um, so she was planning to hide the spies in the materials to keep them safe. She told the men, I know 
the, the, oh well, okay, this is a big point in the story. So Rahab's hiding them in and now it's time for her to speak up for herself, right? She looks at these spies and she says, I've got something to say, right? She tells them in, I know that the Lord has promised you this land. I know that God will keep his promise and your people will take over. I have heard about all that God has done for his people. I know that he split the Red Sea for you to cross safely. I know that God protected you in battle. And when my family heard the stories of God, my heart melted. I knew the Lord God is the real God of heaven and the God of earth. Before I hide you, I have a request. Will you promise me with the promises of God to show my family kindness because I have shown you kindness? When you come to take over our city, will you protect my family? So Rahab, she's been reading her Bible stories, right? She knows about God. She knows about how he keeps his promises. She has said her heart has melted, right? Her heart, her heart has been soft. And she has been changed by the news of God. This is big. So the two spies knew that she's a follower of God. And they said to her, If you help us keep our secret, we will show you kindness and faithfulness. Now, this is good news, right? How are we feeling so far? We're feeling good, right? So Rahab, even though she had all this life of hard choices and she had um, a hard and sad life, she trusted God. She knew that God, there was only one true God, and he is going to always keep his promises. And she's asking them, your, she says, your God, the one who keeps his promises, will you promise me to show me kindness because I get it. I know who God is, and I want to help you. And they say yes. They're like, absolutely. You keep our secret, and we will show you kindness and faithfulness. So let's see what happens. So once the men were safe, Rahab helped them escape the city by lowering them in a basket outside of her window. She gave them directions for safe travel. Before the men left, they gave Rahab directions for her safety. They explained that everyone that was in her house during the attack on the city would be safe if she ties a red cord on her window. So as soon as the men escaped safely, Rahab went and she tied her red cord on the window and she kept quiet about what had happened. So, how are we feeling about Rahab? Yeah, good. So, she's, she's helping and she's following instructions. And as soon as she gets the chance to protect her family, she goes and she ties that cord. Right? So, we know Rahab, she has a lot of faith. She believes that God's going to protect her. It's really cool. So, now, the battle. The Battle of Jericho happened later in the book of Joshua. Chapter 6 explained that the people of God trusted God to win the battle. They followed God's instructions, and the wall of Jericho fell. So the protection around the city falls down because God keeps his promises. And he told them, hey, I'm going to give you this land. And the people trusted him, and he did. He gave them the land. But what happened to Rahab? When Jericho had been taken over, Joshua... The leader sent the two spies to look for Rahab and his fa and her family. So they knew, Rahab, we got to protect her. Go look for her. So the spies went into her house and they brought out Rahab, her mother, her father, and all her family members. They were safe. They had been protected. Rahab and her family joined the people of God for the rest of their days because Rahab had great faith. So how are we feeling? Yeah, so Rahab's she's pretty cool, right? So the story started, and, and we were kind of worried about her, right? We were like, oh, she makes bad choices, and she, um, her life is so sad and so hard, you know? Maybe, maybe she won't follow God, but she does. She follows God, and she trusts, his, she, tr she trusts God, and she hangs her cord. She protects her family, and in the end, she gets to join the people of God. She gets to go with them and leave her sad life, right? She gets to go be with God's people. Um, and the Bible says it's because she had great faith. So it's not because she did anything awesome. 
and it's not because she never made bad choices uh, right she messes up and her life is hard but she believed that there was only one true God and he was the only way that she could be safe and he she was going to um, do whatever she could she would she you know she distracted the king and she lied and sent him away and she did all this stuff because she knew that there's only one true God and there's only one person to trust and it's God so she was gonna forsake everything else to trust God to have faith that he would protect her and he did um, so I got some questions for you first question what do we learn about God in the story Good. So we learn that God keeps his promises, right? We learn this about God all the time. We learn that God's story um, was spreading, right? We know that Rahab had heard all the stories of God. God was spreading his word. He was spreading um, the news of who he was and um, he was protecting his people, right? He was going to make a way um, for his followers to be protected. Um, Okay, good. Next question. What do we learn about God's people in the story? Good. So we learn about God's people and that um, God's people are only considered God's people because of faith and because of their trust and their faith in God um, and not because they're any sort of special people or not because they have um, big brains or big talent, um, but just because they have faith like Rahab. Um, good. Um, next question. What is the hardest part of the story to understand? So which part was the most confusing? Made you go, hmm, I don't get that. Yeah, so the hardest part of the story for me to understand is that um, for Rahab to trust God, for Rahab to be a follower of God, she had to lie. She had to lie to those people and say, oh yeah, those spies, they went out in the gate and they're gone. You better go catch them. She lies and she hides the people of God. So the Bible says that she was faithful. Um, and so that's confusing for me. <laughs> and that's okay. It's okay to be confused. Um, last question. What is one thing that we definitely do understand from the story? What's one thing that we can learn based on our story? Good. So there's a lot of things we can understand from the story. I think probably the biggest thing to understand is that, um, God has, um, God has a plan for the people who trust him. Um, and that um, even when it seems kind of scary, um, Rahab could be scared or nervous or, or fearful, um, that being faithful to what God wants you to do is, is always going to be the best plan for you. Um, Rahab didn't know, um, but she asked, right? And she spoke up and she, she said who God is and she said, I want you to help me. And, and God really worked that out for her. So, um, yeah, so good. So we do understand that God is faithful. God keeps his promises. Um, and the people of God belong to God because of their faith, not because of their actions. Okay, so um, before we finish, um, this is normally where we play a game or something like that. Um, I'm thinking that uh, today I want you to draw a picture. Um, so draw a picture of... Um, a scene in our story. Maybe you want to draw these spies coming to Rahab's house. Maybe you want to draw the spies hiding on the rooftop. Um, maybe you want to um, draw the spies getting lowered down out of the window. Or maybe the battle where Rahab and her family are safe and get to join the people of God. Um, if you don't want to draw you think <laughs> the drawing would be hard i have attached a coloring page you can color the story so it's good for us to take um words and pictures and put them together help us remember the story um before we leave um 
I have two more things we need to do. I want to I want to talk about a Bible verse, um, and I want to talk and I want us to pray together before we finish the video. So, uh, first, the Bible verse says. Um, I want to do Ephesians 2, 8. So if you want to look in your Bible, Ephesians is actually in the New Testament of your Bible, um, which is interesting because sometimes it's hard for us to realize that the Old Testament stories and the New Testament stories go together, um, but they do. They super go together. So um, let me find Ephesians. There we go. Okay, so yeah, Ephesians 2.8, um, and listen to what it says. It says, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Um, so the Bible is saying that um, God gave you a gift, um, and he saved you um, because of faith. So, if you're a follower of God, it is only because you have faith in Him and not because of anything that you did. And that made me really think about Rahab and how she became um, one of the people of God. It's the same way we become a people of God. Um, so, I just challenge you to think about that this week and think about it as you draw your picture, you color. Um, think about the good gift that God gave us, um, that we only have to have faith in Him. We don't have to be awesome or do anything special. Um, okay. So let's pray about that. Um, I had close your eyes. Dear Lord, thank you so much for um, these Bible stories that help us understand who you are and um, help us understand who we are and what we bring to the table, God. That we don't we don't bring anything special and we don't have to have um, anything. We don't have to have happy lives or, or good choices or anything to be. Um, one of your people. We only have to trust you. And we have heard stories like Rahab heard stories. Um, and we know that um, you keep your promises and we know that there's only one true God. I pray that the boys and girls um, hearts would be melted like Rahab's and that they would um, be, um, they would put their faith in, in who you are. And that they would trust you even when it's confusing or scary, God. Um, thank you for showing us that you keep your promises. Thank you for showing us that you, um, you have a plan for your people. Um, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, boys and girls, if you want to post your picture, I would love to see it. So, if you want to post the picture you drew or the picture you color, um, it would just really brighten my day to see some, um, some of your work. Um, uh, if you um, want to post yourself doing the Bible verse too, that would be awesome. Um, but it's always good to share what you're learning about God. So uh, take some time to do that today or this week. Um, and I will see you next Wednesday.